Well, ladies and gentlemen, I had the privilege yesterday of reading in its entirety a book by Wafa Sultan called A God Who Hates. She was listed, uh, I believe, by Newsweek as one of the 100 most influential people in the world because she stood up to a man on Al Jazeera and told him to be quiet so she could talk. And that just wasn't done in the Muslim world. But Sharia law is slowly working its way into public life in Islamic and non-Islamic aid nations around the world. But few people understand what Sharia law really is and what it means for the people who live under it. Gary Lane explains. What is Sharia law? Sharia law is uh, the legal system based on the teachings of the Quran, uh, the Sunnah, and the Hadith of Muhammad, being applied into the community as the legal basis for life. Jeff Hammond is a Christian who has lived and worked in Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim nation, for 35 years. He says Indonesian Christians are concerned about creeping Sharia law, now in place in half of the country's 32 provinces. It's going from one province to another. It's not something that's happening all at once, but step by step. For example, even Christian school girls are forced to cover their heads in Padang province. Elsewhere in Indonesia, children attending public schools are required to learn the Quran. In Indonesia's Aceh province, Sharia police make nightly patrols to ensure that unmarried or non-related couples are not seen together in public. The Christians are very concerned not only because of what's happened here in Indonesia, but they also see reports that have come in from other countries. Islamic nations where devotion to Sharia law causes vigilantes in Somalia to behead a 25-year-old aid worker for converting from Islam to Christianity. In Iran, where women are legally stoned to death for committing adultery. In Afghanistan, where prostitutes like these two women are executed for their behavior. In Pakistan, the government apparently has accepted the imposition of Sharia law in the Taliban-controlled Swat Valley of the Northwest Frontier Province. It's a place where violators of Sharia are often subjected to lashes. Enforcement of Pakistan's blasphemy laws have led to the imprisonment of Christians like 20-year-old Sandal Bibi and her father Golshir on charges of blasphemy against the Quran. Syrian-born American psychiatrist Wafa Sultan is the author of the new book, A God Who Hates. She argues Islam is currently at war with itself. She says its treatment of women is the genesis of all modern-day Muslim intolerance. Islam's progression of violence, self-pity and hate, says Sultan, will ultimately lead to the demise of the Muslim world. Well, Wafa Sultan joins us now from Washington. Doctor, we welcome you to this program. Thank you for the book, A God Who Hates. Very interesting. Thank you so much for having me. You were raised in Syria. How are women treated under Islam? Under Islam, women have no rights. They are terribly mistreated. They are considered to be mentally unfit to take care of themselves. A woman under Islamic Sharia has no right to choose her husband, has no right to ask for divorce, has no right to gain custody of her children. Her husband had the right to divorce her without a question asked, had the right to sleep with as many women as he can buy without any consideration for her dignity or her feelings. So generally speaking, women under Islam are isolated from the rest of the world. And I would love to give you an example from my own life. I dedicated my book to the memory of my niece. My niece was forced to marry her cousin. She was 11, he was over 40. Her life with him was very terrible life. He was very abusive. And I always remember her escaping from her husband's home to her father's, begging her father, you know, please let me stay here. I cannot take the torture anymore. He's very abusive. And her father would say, it is 
shame for a Muslim woman to leave her husband's house without his permission. So go back and I promise I will talk to him. At the age of 28, my niece committed suicide, leaving four children behind her. Let me ask you something. So, you pointed out, and I won't have to interrupt you, but because there's so much else to take in this book. You pointed out that Islam is living in essentially a uh, seventh century world, that they're way backward and that they're, they're losing out in science and medicine and all these other things because of adherence to Islam. Would you tell us about that? You know, in the Islamic world, we are dealing with the mentality of the seventh century. So it is very hard. We are in totally different time and in totally different planet. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, President Obama last night said, well, he said the, the uh, uh, terrorists or whatever term you want to give them, they've hijacked a great religion uh, and, and, and changed it. Is that true? Uh, we'll it is a misconception right. that I need to clarify. All right. I believe Muslims are victims of their own belief system. Muslims are hijacked by their doctrine, not the other way around. Well, the, we are victims of our Islamic 